Now, uh, Hugh uh, was going to be telling us about the revolution in Yemen being unfinished. Its principal target stood down last year. His deputy was confirmed as transitional president in an unopposed election. A real presidential election is scheduled in Yemen for 2014. But ex-President Saleh remains leader of the ruling party in Parliament. The other main power in the land there is Ali Mohsen, a major general who commands what some say is the military wing of the Yemeni Muslim Brotherhood. And there are other powers there too, American drones, Al-Qaeda and Iran. Footsteps in the markets of old Sana'a. A cloth market, spice market, carpenters. A leather craftsman is hammering out pistol holsters. A lot of pistol holsters. There are dozens of tall buildings all around, hundreds of years old, many of them with stained glass windows. There are ancient mosques with brick minarets. Children play and sing in Sana's alleyways. Boys playing football everywhere, every day. In one of the main squares of the old city, star Yemeni singer Ali Inaba performs to more than 600 guests at a wedding. But the calm of old Sana is constantly shattered by a new phenomenon, a plague of motorcycles, many of them reconnaissance scouts for the different armed factions which have emerged since the revolution. It reminds me of South Beirut, where Hezbollah uses nimble motorcycle security. There have also been assassinations here from motorcycles. And all over Sana now there are banners across many streets and stenciled slogans on the walls, which could also be from Beirut. My Sana guide, journalist Mohammed Al Kipsi, translated some of them for me. The slogan says, God is greater, death for America, death for Israel, God damns the Jew, victory for Islam. If somebody had put this banner up a year ago, what would have happened? Just go to jail. The slogans are the work of the Houthi, Shia Muslims from the north who've been fighting wars against the Yemeni government for years. But now they're free to say and write and sing whatever they like. A Houthi bookstore nearby has biographies of the Hezbollah leader, Hassan Nasrallah. This suggests at the very least a link of some kind between the Houthi and Iran. In the revolutionary district of Sana, which is now known as Change Square, a long stretch of the ring road is still occupied by protest tents as large as marquees from the revolution last year, one of them with vegetables growing outside it. These chants are coming from a Houthi tent. Ali al came out to speak to me. Down, down, Israel. <laughs> he says it with a big grin. Do you have support from Iran? Yes. Okay. We start without any support. And uh, if there is a relation with Iran, there is no problem to uh, stand in front of any enemy, America and Israel. On one corner here on March the 18th last year, more than 50 protesters were shot dead. My guide, Mohammed, was nearby. Suddenly I've heard like 5,000 bullets came on one time. From all the roofs. At the unarmed protesters? Yeah. Whoever did this, and it's not certain that it was regime troops, the blood spilled gave impetus to the agreement which eventually ended the presidency of Ali Abdullah Saleh. Significant blood has also been spilled by Al-Qaeda here. In March, they slaughtered nearly 200 Yemeni soldiers at an army base in the south. And in May this year, TV cameras were rolling when this happened. An Al-Qaeda suicide bomber in military uniform penetrated a rehearsal for a parade here in Sana'a and killed nearly 100 soldiers. This is footage from an Al-Qaeda television station in Yemen. It's called Madat, which means reinforcement. It was recorded on a mobile phone. It shows an Al-Qaeda commander, Jalal Baladi, with an automatic rifle on his lap, lecturing about 60 captured Yemeni soldiers. He asks, who is ruling us now? The Americans. 
and Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood here may be hand in hand. Osama bin Laden once described a Brotherhood leader in Yemen, Abdul Majid al-Zindawi, as my father, my teacher. During the Yemen revolution, Zindawi announced, we are close to the establishment of the Islamic Caliphate state. A dissident Yemeni Brotherhood member who wants to remain anonymous for fear of reprisals is certain that the Yemen Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda are one and the same. They are all together. You have the Islamic Brotherhoods and you have the Salafis, but when they have a crisis, they all come together. And a Sana human rights activist who's received death threats for her outspoken views, Amal al-Basha, says the key to this alliance is Major General Ali Mosen, who commands the 1st Armoured Brigade, which defected during the revolution, apparently to support the youth, but really to reinforce the Brotherhood. He's the armed arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. And he is now doing his best to build an Islamic army to rule the country under the Sharia law. Major General Mohsen denies this. But she says that if they succeed in gaining power, they'll then be rejected by the overwhelming majority of the Yemeni people who will at last see them for what they really are. I want them to rule because they are going to fail. And then we will change them. Now we are living with hope of change. Before we were despair. Tomorrow is a new day. Back in old Sana, a new life. A little girl sees my microphone as I try to work out where this sound is coming from, points up to an open window and comes over to tell me what's going on. This is Khadir. She says, I may be seven years old. She tells me it's a delivery party. The woman in the house has asked for a singer to come and celebrate the birth of her son. Kadir, shukran. You're welcome, she said. Thank you, Kadir. Hugh Sykes with the report he made earlier. Hugh's fine, by the way. He's phoned in to let us know he disappeared because of a power cut. Six minutes to six.